December 11th, hallelujah, led by the Spirit. And our focus verse is for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Our first reading is from Exodus uh, chapter 13, verses 17 through 22. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 13. All right, and starting at verse 17, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them throughout, led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest preadventure the people repent and when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the, lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not the pillar of the cloud by day, nor he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Amen. Our next reading is from Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily, who they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, he, I'm sorry, and the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. Going on to 17, and when Peter saw it, he answered un, unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and the God of your, our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto you. 
and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want that the, through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And then um, in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Romans chapter 8. Starting at verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, hallelujah. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we, we are the children of God. And if the children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be may be also glorified together. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank and praise God for his word as we open our hearts and minds to continue to receive all that God has for us this day. Uh, Mr. Elder Williams will be teaching our lesson this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> We thank God for Evangelist Floyd setting that foundation and opening up with praise and worship. We certainly bring you greetings from Greater Bible Way Temple of Albion, where I am the pastor at. Thank God for uh, my wife, my daughter, and my daughter's friend joining us on this Sunday morning. Thank God also for the hospitality of faith of the apostles and also the leadership of District Elder Summers. Today's Sunday School lesson led by the Spirit is very essential to the life of the Christian, the saint, or the child of God. Amen. Without being led by the Spirit, then obviously you are being led by something else. And there is God and the devil. So it's very important for us that we follow the scriptures. We follow the word of God concerning our lifestyle, our daily walk, uh, and how we approach uh, our daily trials and tribulations that we face. I would like to go to Romans 8 and 14 first to focus on our focus verse. And also would like to thank uh, Evangelist Floyd again. She gave me the teacher's book for this semester of Sunday school, or this quarter, excuse me. In Romans 8, verse 14, the Bible reads, for as many are, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God or the daughters of God. When you are led by the spirit of God, you are simply his. This is in reference to your relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. You cannot be of Jesus Christ if you refuse to follow his word. When it's saying being led of the spirit, the only instructions or documentations that we have to our privilege today is the word of God. It's the Bible. And me personally, I like to reference the King James Version. 
during the time uh, King James was the king of England. And he had 54 of the top scholars in the land that he had access to come together to give a translation. Uh, also, Shakespeare was involved in the translation. That's why you have thus, the, thou, yea, and these type of uh, adverbs and verbs, adjectives and nouns uh, to support some of these scriptures that we read. But he did not simply at this particular time take any scriptures out. Uh, and although uh, many people like to use other variations and versions of the Bible, I choose to use the King James Version for this particular reason. Amen. We have to be led by the spirit that we're seeing um, all time high in this country with violence. Uh, we see an all time high in this country, suicides. We're seeing an all time high in this country in uh, depression. Uh, we see an all time high uh, in all type of stuff. Um, a lot of the leadership uh, that is from a government standpoint, um, they don't even want to hear what thus saith the Lord. They don't want to even capitulate to any scriptural principles that us as apostolics, we try to base our life upon. So during this time, um, I would say more than any other time, we must be led by the Spirit. And this is why salvation is very important of one, acknowledging Jesus is God, um, repenting from their sins, being physically baptized in water in Jesus' name and having the gift of the Holy Ghost. During the day of the Old Testament, and we're going to get to Exodus, no doubt, in the um, scripture uh, preference of this particular text, they did not have the Holy Ghost how we have today with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit walked with them. And when they would commit certain sins, they would do certain sacrifices. Turtle doves, pigeons, bullocks, sweet spices, herbs, these type of sacrifices they would offer up uh, to God for their sins. But it was not sufficient because they would continue to sin uh, in the same format that they was previous. This is why God had to give his only begotten son for us because Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. And uh, I believe it was uh, 40 something days, uh, uh, excuse me, 50 something days from the time that he rose uh, from the dead, that the dead Pentecost occurred. And this is when I uh, he heard a mighty rushing wind and the Holy Spirit filled the room. And those that was there uh, spoke uh, with other tongues, the Spirit of God gave them utterance. This uh, act that happened, that's recorded in the book of Acts, uh, literally gave us God in us. This is why it's important for us to have the Holy Ghost. So it's not like the Old Testament where God is walking on the side of us. God is now in us. So when we uh, begin to be tempted by sin, that is activation or should be activated something in you if you have the Holy Spirit, a conscience that this is not right for me to do. This is not right for me to say. And this is the basic fundamentals of the activity of the Holy Spirit. And this is why we're focusing on today being led of the Spirit. Also, in this, before we go to, <clears throat> excuse me, Exodus, the Old Testament, um, <clears throat> is dealing with the relationship. Uh, we are children of God. Amen. We are ch we are His children. So it's setting the relationship. Everybody is being led by the Spirit, allowing. Because a lot of us, we don't allow God to lead us. We want to do our own thing. Praise the Lord. But we have to let God lead us. 
Before we go any further, my father was rushed to the hospital. My biological father was rushed to the hospital on Thursday. So I got off work and set up in the hospital with him for hours, praying, meditating on the word uh, there. And uh, come to find out he had to have his knee drained. And um, the fluid that was on his knee uh, was toxic and of a bacteria that can simply just have you uh, bedridden. He was in a bed for approximately six days, really couldn't move, and really was not eating. Um, he's a type 2 diabetic, has high cholesterol, um, and also uh, high blood pressure, and he has vertigo as well. So uh, I was thankful that we was able to take care of that, have his dream name. He was prescribed antibiotics and uh, sent home. Uh, but he was refusing to go see the doctor. And some of us old Christian saints, we don't like today's technology as far as their medicine. Um, but it, at a point, sometimes you have to trust in the Lord uh, that God will have his hand on uh, these professionals, nurses, doctors. Uh, because I will confess, District Elder Summers, when the doctor came in, I shook his hand as hard as I could and let him know, praise the Lord, I am Pastor Williams. This is my father. I need you to make sure you take care of this, to make sure he know that I was about business. I'm saved, but you're not going to kill one of my family members due to your lack of experience and the knowledge. Let the church say amen. amen. So that simply said, I was led by the Spirit. My sister lives in Jacksonville, Florida, who will be visiting the end of this month. She was very concerned, crying to me on the phone. My dad was refusing to go to the hospital. It was not till his oldest son convinced him and basically mandated him to see the physician. And uh, we was able to work it out. And all this testimony that I'm saying that I was led by the Spirit. I am also very, um, I'm very cautious on the things that is promoted of the world. So I seek prayer, fasting, and supplication concerning my decisions of the things that they offer us. Because we got to understand that this world is the devil's playground. And uh, the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And I don't want the devil to steal nothing from me. <laughs> I don't want the devil to destroy nothing from me. And I definitely don't want the devil to kill Nothing that I'm involved in, a part of, no member of the church, none of that. I want God's will to be done. But for God's will to be done, we must be led by the Spirit. Let the church say amen. amen. Let us go to Exodus chapter 13. I just wanted to briefly speak on that. I don't know. Um, how much time I will have to concerning breaking down the scriptures because um, I want to make sure that we get appropriate recess uh, in between our services. And I don't want people rolling their eyes at me and smacking their lips. <laughs> I want to be a pleasant messenger of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Blessed is those that are few in word that they have be called upon again to speak in front of God's people. In the book of Exodus chapter 13, verse 17, is dealing with uh, the Exodus because we have to understand the word Exodus is a Hebrew word for exit. What was their exit? They were exiting the hand of Pharaoh, the enemy, the devil, they were in slavery. They were in bondage. Now, we all know what slavery presents, so I'm not even going to deal with the physical aspect, but their brain, their thought process was in slavery because they knew no other way of living except what the Egyptians and the leadership of Pharaoh presented them. I was very curious of the ancient Egypt civilization and not just middle school, but high school that my daughter, Camille, and her friend Brooke attend high school 
now, we had the opportunity to pick a civilization and present a presentation and also a, a paper um, to our class and our teachers uh, during my time in high school. I was very curious and I learned a lot of things, elements and lifestyle uh, that they live. The actual age of an Egyptian male was approximately 25, maybe 26 years old. You have to understand um, from the studies that I did that these pharaohs were named pharaoh early, early at the age of 12. So many of the pharaohs were serving in leadership at a very early age. Not only was the pharaoh put in place at the age of early as 12, they had to marry their sister. If they did not have a sister, and I know this is gross, especially to the teenagers here, if they did not have a sister, then they had to marry their first cousin because they did not want to have any outside blood as far as the leadership. And then also they worship gods, plural. There was a God of the sun, there was a God of the water, there was a God for the sand, a God for the gold, a God for, it was a God simply for almost every adjective, verb, noun, thing that you can think of that was established during this time. Also the technology, we still have not met or uh, has not been released, at least to the public, and we're in 2022, the year of our Lord, we still don't have some of the technology that they was using during this time. It's still almost virtually impossible for any architect, engineer, to build a pyramid such as we see in the land or the country of Egypt. Uh, so they was uh, very advanced, but they had a lot of gods. So what I'm trying to get to as we're focusing on led by the spirit during this time frame, they were slaves, not just as working for cheap or no labor for the Egyptians and for the Pharaoh, their mental capacity was enslaved, was in doctrine of the ways that was being displaced during that time. It also deals with the land of the Philistines. I just, uh, taught on, I believe it was a few Wednesdays ago, on defeating the giant. Goliath was of the people of the Philistines. So we see here that God being led, because this is what we're focusing on this morning, God did not allow them to go through the way of the land of the Philistines. So what does that mean? God had prepared a passage of travel that he went around the enemy. See, sometimes we don't have to take on the battle. Some of us do. Um, some of us like, enjoy fighting, enjoy chaos, friction, turmoil, division. These are all things that is really not of God. Division and confusion and chaos is not of God. So when you find yourself in these places, you need to remove yourself. I don't like a whole lot of drama. I don't even want to hear, because to me, it's a waste of time. Our time on this earth is very short, and only, only what you do for the Lord will last. Church, say amen. amen. So it's dealing with also uh, the time through the way of the wilderness. And we all know the children of Israel was lost in the wilderness, I believe, approximately uh, 40 years. And I spoke briefly here before in this beautiful church about the important biblical uh, number of reference of importance to the number 40. Uh, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Could you imagine walking <laughs> around on foot, on foot? They was on foot for 40 years because you refused to follow the will of God. 
you refuse to be led by the Spirit. Not something God do, because we try to blame God for everything. Because part of being led by the Spirit is also having a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of discipline, a spirit of discernment, which the Holy Ghost advances that in us. We get a notation of something that may seem dangerous, may seem fraudulent, may seem that we should not be partaking or be around this particular area, around these particular people. This is why we have to be led by the Spirit. They was lost for 40 years in the wilderness. And what many people don't understand, Moses had to literally sacrifice his physical life to push forth the future. Moses did not make it to the promised land. If you read the scriptures, they literally carry his bones <laughs> to the promised land. And I study that because I, I reminisce on my mother's death. Praise the Lord. If my mother would have not died, I would have not answered my call. Therefore, my mother had to be taken on to glory for me to be forced to follow or be led by the Spirit. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you today? I didn't want my mother to die. Please don't confuse the two. But God allowed it. He had to let it come to pass for me to be forced into the position that I am in today. Thank God for that. If you look <coughs> here, it's dealing also um, with Moses took the bones of Joseph. You see, this is a tradition that they even had in this early time of those that were in leadership generally would then be reburied in the area of the transition of the people. I spoke uh, briefly and asked the church family here to pray for the Ellis family. Uh, Bishop David Ellis, previous to first assistant presiding bishop of the Pentecost Assemblies of the World, his wife, the mother of our former presiding bishop, Bishop Charles Ellis, passed away a few days ago. Uh, bishop Charles Ellis, when he took on the leadership of Grady Grace Temple in the city of Detroit, uh, his father was buried uh, nearby uh, the church when it was located on Seven Mile and Schaefer. When they purchased this property and had this uh, monstrosity of a church built on Seven Mile and Telegraph Road, they unburied his father and then put him in the trans transition of location in the new church, in the new location. This is simply the same thing that we're seeing here in the scriptures. Now, I don't know uh, what the thought process might have been in Bishop Charles Ellis. I heard that when the trumpet sound and those that are dead in Christ will rise again, I guess he's hoping that his father will see on his way up what the ministry that he started on a storefront with him and his family was living upstairs in the attic until that church blew up, can see on his way to glory what his ministry had propelled to. Amen? So this is something for us to understand that Joseph was in leadership. Not Joseph, Mary's husband. <laughs> Jesus' earthly father. No, no, not the carpenter. This is Joseph that served in leadership. The same Joseph that was telling his brothers about his dreams and he was portrayed, he was betrayed and sold in to the Egyptians by his brothers. And they tricked his father that he was dead. But they needed Joseph when uh, the plagues had been, began to plague on that particular uh, country concerning uh, their sins. 
Praise the Lord. And this is, we really honestly need um, the United States of America to be led by the Spirit of God. Because if God, praise the Lord, destroyed Sada and Gomorrah for their sins, if he don't do something to the United States of America, we know we owe Sada and Gomorrah a huge apology. <laughs> because we are seeing some of the same, if not worse, behavior taking place. So this is why we need to pray and fast that God's will be done because the wages of sin is death. You cannot continue to sin over and over and over and over and over again and think absolutely positively nothing's going to happen. It doesn't work that way. Amen. And I can even tell you from a scientific perspective because the atheists or the non-believers, they always want to argue the will of God and the scriptures. Just get you about 40,000 cigarettes and sit down and keep smoking nonstop and watch you croak over because your lungs will collapse. That's science, which God is truly science. If you don't believe that, get you some alcohol and just keep drinking gallons and gallons, nonstop, and gallons and gallons, and watch your liver fall about your body and you pass away and croak as well. See, the Bible is lined up perfectly. Man is the one that tries to uh, intervene concerning what the word says. The word is very clear. It lines up line upon line and precept upon precept. We get confused, but God is not confused. Let's go to Acts chapter 3 and deal with that particular text. Uh, Evangelist Luke is responsible for not only writing the gospel according to Luke, but he's also received credit writing the book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostle. It's very important to understand the writers of these books, the epistles in the Bible, because it helps us understand their perspective. And also, uh, as I spent some time concerning the foundation of the culture of the people in the time frame of which these scriptures uh, is reading, is written in, excuse me. Now, this is the very uh, famous uh, passage dealing with uh, the individual that was in front of the church that was crippled, uh, and he had deficiencies in his body. And he was receiving alms, with his alms, money, uh, by almost everybody that walked past him. And this is something that we see today in the United States of America where we see people on the side of the highway, the side of the street, that is, especially in uh, bigger cities, asking for money, asking for food, asking for donations. So it had been built up. He had been there so long that uh, essentially everybody that walked by him gave him some money. Also what's very interesting in this particular text is that, did y'all catch the name of the church? According to the scriptures, the name of the church was beautiful. <laughs> that was the actual name of the church that this particular text or scripture is referring to the actions of the apostles. Now this, the acts of the apostles, this entire book is dealing from the transition from discipleship to apostleship, right? And without this transition, this church, this beautiful church that we're in right now today will not be in existence. The reason why we are in the apostles or in the apostolic doctrine, which we're told 
to be in is because the apostles, besides Paul, all physically, somebody say physically, physically walked with Jesus when he was here on earth. So therefore, if it's anybody that has the truth or that is qualified to write down scriptures for us to follow, as we're focusing on today, being led by the Spirit, is those men that physically walk with Jesus Christ. Let your church say amen. amen. So at, at this particular point, Peter had become the, new, the first New Testament presiding bishop. I'm almost done. I'm going to wrap it up here. Praise the Lord. He had become the first New Testament presiding bishop. Do we not remember when Jesus was with Peter? He said, upon this rock, I will build my church, right? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Who was the rock? Peter. He was referring to Peter. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The Bible says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That was the first day of the New Testament church being established. So Peter was that rock. And it didn't matter the plans of the devil. That's why Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It still went forth. See, the devil thought he had victory because Jesus laid down his life. They didn't take his life. Jesus laid down his life for our sins. The Bible says that Jesus gave up what? The ghost. That was for us. And we would not even have the ability to have the Holy Spirit without Jesus Christ giving up his life. So that way we can be led by the Spirit. That way Jesus can put himself in each and every one of us. That we can have that power. What power, Pastor Williams, is you referring to? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible reads, but ye shall receive power after. It didn't say before. It said, after the Holy Ghost have come upon you. So Peter was in leadership in this particular time. And he also was with John. Praise the Lord. We also should be very grateful because early on, one of the first councils, Peter, John, and the other apostles were in argument if the salvation shall be shared with the Gentiles. So if you're not 100% Jew, <laughs> not 98, not 99, because anything mixed according to the scripture, you're a Samaritan. If you ain't 100% Jew, you should be thanking God that they decided, which God was always in control, to, sh to be able to share the word of God, the good news, salvation with not just the Jews, but everybody. So setting that foundation here, they didn't have money to really give. They was on a humongous missionary trip. What they was doing was going around establishing churches that the word of God will be spread across all nations. But this is one of the first miracles that the apostles, that was disciples of Jesus Christ, actually did. And they spoke to that man and let him know, silver and gold I have not, but the power of Jesus. This is being led by the Spirit. The power of Jesus. Get up and walk. And this is something that can be told to all of us. Stop complaining about your situation and do something about it. Faith without works is dead. So you can't just sit on the couch and say, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. Why don't you do something about it? Praise the Lord. Because you have to have the faith alone with the works 
to put it together and push forth for something to happen. Let's go to our last particular text. And we're going to try to wrap this up. Once again, we're thankful that um, you guys have invited us to be a part of this particular um, importance. Um, Sunday school, part of your services. I'm very grateful, me and my wife, to be in your presence on today. In Romans chapter 8, verse 12, and I'm not reading all of this because Evangelist Floyd did, and I'm sure that although many of you may adore my voice and the tone of my voice, that <laughs> it may be rather best that we don't recite the same scriptures over and over as far as timing. Amen? But here it deals with us um, living after the spirit, not after the flesh. See, the Bible says no good thing dwells in the flesh. That's why we go through the sickness, the hurts and pains. My back is hurt and I work 63 hours this week, six days. Um, I actually put in 700 break lines on Friday. Uh, that's why you didn't see me. I don't know if y'all had the fellowship on last night or not. Hey, man, that's why you did not see me there or the, uh, Floyd uh, along with the sickness of my father and things that was going on and the preparation of this particular Sunday school and the sermon that I will be preaching here in a few minutes. I did not want to let the people of Paul Paul down. So I thought it was more important for me to rest because um, I only got about uh, 12 hours of sleep since Thursday. And, uh, and I wanted to make sure that the Sunday school lesson was solid and ready for preparation for the people to receive, to eat my wife's uh, wonderful cooking, and to get some form of rest before traveling the highways in the state of Michigan. And I'm pretty sure you know they're still under construction even though snow has reached the ground. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. But flesh is a thing that will lead us astray. And we don't have to get all into perversion or murderous sins or, as we would say as saints, high-level sins. We can do things. Many of us are on a diet due to our flesh, praise the Lord, when we're not supposed to drink soda. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody out here on today. You're not supposed to eat candy. Praise the Lord. I know candy canes is coming in a few weeks, already here. We're not supposed to eat chocolate, or we're not supposed to eat sweets, cakes, and these things. These things hurt us, but somehow, some way, we always got a soda in our hand. We always munch it on candy. And that's because of the flesh. This is what the flesh desires. I understand that I'm supposed to keep my sugar levels low and not take of this type of diet. But when I want a Mountain Dew or a Coca-Cola, praise the Lord, I want it. <laughs> I don't care what nobody says. So we have to keep our flesh, praise the Lord, under submission. This is when the pastor, District Elder Summers, Pastor Horn, or many pastors of the apostolic faith, they call fast. That the church can be disciplined. And they can, that they can be led by what? Be led by the Spirit. It gives you a better opportunity to have a direct, a direct communication with Jesus Christ. It's, all, it's almost equivalent to the gutters. Um, I don't know how many brothers in here have uh, dabbled in that type of uh, work or occupation, cleaning gutters, or done it at your various houses that you lived at in your life. But it's almost like gutters being uh, <laughs> filled with garbage and mess that needs to be cleaned. And your communication with Jesus Christ, if you have the world's point of view constantly pouring into you, constantly, right, pointing to you, and you're partaking of these things that were not, how can God speak to you directly, clear, where well, you can hear it? You can't. 
You have to clean this stuff up. And even my wife, she taught half of the Bible study when we were talking about fasting, the medical point of view of fasting. I'm not, many, I'm not sure how many of you, as we're talking about being led by the Spirit, have had to have some type of medical pr- procedure, even dental, where they said, do not eat after 12 midnight or do not eat after 8 p.m. They're telling you to fast from a medical standpoint for the benefits from a medical standpoint. So that means what? The Bible is lining up spiritually and physically (laughs) being led by the Spirit. But we definitely, as I bring this Sunday school to an end, church, we have to really, these deceptive delusion times that we're living in um, and the poor leadership, not so much in the church, but the poor leadership is driving or leading us astray from the word of God. I just saw uh, this flyer that my wife shared with me. Three of our most phenomenal, I ain't going to say their names, three of our most phenomenal gospel voices in the body of Christ were partaking of something of a sinful nature. And they was the three headline singers. And it just shows you the time that we're living in. People is willing to compromise the word of God for filthy lucre, which is money. Church, we cannot be those people. I believe God has a special blessing on the city of Paul Paul. That's why I would like to be involved in this ministry, because I believe that God has special things. I don't just go around lying. I don't go around fabricating or saying things, and I'd be very careful when I prophesy. But my wife is a testament. The majority of the prophecies that I tell her, they come true. They come true. So we need to be in a place where all of us, not just Pastor Williams, not just District Elder Summers, can be led by the Spirit. God bless you and love you in Jesus' name.